Hey everyone, Joe Axman here. In this video, I want to look at the chart of Lionel Messi, soccer player. Uh, this one's by requ request. And uh, guys, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not already. All right. <clears throat> Share my screen. Okay, I'm going to go straight to the Wikipedia, just get a summary of his life. All right, so, I mean... <clears throat> I've never seen Lionel Messi. I, I don't watch soccer. I don't watch any sports. Uh, so I'm not really, I don't have any personal relationship with, with him. Can't really comment, but uh, he is considered, um, I don't know, I guess one of the, one of the great um, footballers, as they call it, uh, soccer in America, maybe the best. He's one of, uh, widely, one of the greatest players of all time. And, uh, you know, he's got tons of awards. I'm not going to go through all the all the awards. Awards. He's born in Argentina. He relocated to Spain to join Barcelona at the age of 13. That's quite young. Um, 13. That's crazy. My son's 13. He just plays video games. Um, that's not true. That's not all he does, but he does a lot. Anyway. Um, Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just basically, it's all the same. Like, it's just all about him being, you know, like the best soccer player ever, right? Except um, there is some interesting stuff here. He, he excelled and he, his whole family was like his, his brothers and his cousins and uh, they became professional footballers. So it's in his family. Um and he was excellent right from a young age. The uh, unusual thing, let me just read this quote. Um, when you saw him, you would think the kid can't play ball. He's a dwarf. He's too fragile, too small. But immediately you'd realize that he was born different, that he was a phenomenon and that he was going to be something impressive. Um, so that's when he's 12. Obviously, he's, you know, at 13, he went to Spain. So let's see. He was di at the age of 10, he was diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency. See, that makes him small and and um uh petite, right? Not not great for a sports person. Um and then there was some difficulty with paying for the growth hormone treatment because it cost a lot and they weren't rich. Um so but I think one way or another he managed to get it. Uh, in any case, he got it, and then I think he took it to at age till four, age fourteen. Um, after completing growth hormone treatment, age fourteen. Um, but he was still small. He's still small, and as a result of that, he's he's shorter, smaller, and um, he has less stamina. Uh, I read that at some point. I'm not going to find it. This is really long. It's just, I don't know how anyone can obsess over soccer this much, but uh, they do. They love that sort of thing. Okay, <laughs> this is just all soccer. That's all it is. This is like, they wrote like a novel about soccer. I mean, some people go crazy over it. I don't, I would never, I've never watched a single game. I played soccer when I was a kid. That's about it. All right. Here's his chart. And before I, get into all that let me just flip this so his moon is way out of bounds and we'll look at that and then mercury retro mercury is very slow and then he's got some other retros retrogrades um so just keep that in mind as we go through it it'll be relevant i guess all right sun and cancer at two degrees in the sixth house and basically, for any sports, uh, generally, you often want to see fifth and sixth house uh, planets. So he's got both of these. So that's quite strong. Right. Sixth house for fun and games, entertainment. Fifth house, sorry, fifth house for fun and games and entertainment. Sixth house for competition. Um, so sun in the sixth house, clearly a two degrees cancer. 
and you know that's that's uh it's fine it's all good cancer i mean i don't think cancer is particularly um a sign that we would attribute to sports or athletics or anything like that but it's not um diminishing it either it's just sort of neutral i i, I obviously it has to be the way it is uh so sun and cancer in the sixth house and i mean you know as far as personality wise i could talk about that but that i don't know how much that really plays into to all this i think what's more important is um first of all moon out of bounds in gemini moon out of bounds just goes out of bounds planets they go to extremes they go farther they push boundaries uh because the out of bounds is the ecliptic the sun follows a certain path and within range i think it's the the range of boundaries the bounds are 23 degrees in some minutes 17 maybe 27 something like that if there's a seven involved if it's outside of that it's considered out of bounds so the moon is going you know as, as it's spiraling certain times it can go out of bounds and it goes farther than that and those people generally are are rule breakers revolutionaries people who do do things differently for good or bad can be criminals but um a lot of times you know when we see it with famous people it's just because they they just push push harder go further right uh gemini are skills usually skills of the hands but i think skills of the body in general right more so skills of the hands but uh just in general skills talent uh a lot of that comes from from gemini's and gemini's often seen with you know very skillful right um hands don't play into soccer really you're not allowed to use your hands so it's not really about hands but uh you know moon and gemini is going to be all over the like gemini's the 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 sign that is most unpredictable uh I mean, more mentally, you know, if you if you're talking about hands, then yeah. But um, uh, Moon and Mercury, however, have a mutual reception, and this is prominent. This is strong, and that's one of the things that's giving, you know, that's really unique about him, because Moon is in Mercury's sign, Mercury is in Moon's sign, and these are the fifth and sixth house. So fifth and sixth house are taking place, even though the fifth house cusp is in uh, uh, Taurus. It's still most of the fifth house is Gemini. So fifth and sixth house are trading places, going back and forth. That's game, sports, and get. These are the two houses that we'd want to see. All right. And um, so that's what's significant about Cancer here is that it's ruled by the moon. Mercury's ruling Gemini, and they're, they're trading places. So that's benefiting all these planets, in fact. Uh, yeah. So the... Uh, all, all these connected planets are going to benefit. Mutual reception really strengthens the planets because the, the planets can connect to their uh, domicile sign. And that is excellent. That's quite good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, sun is ruling the seventh house. Seventh and the sixth. So, you know, opposite people in his life become com competitive. He's bringing them into the sixth house. And that's not so great for relationships, but good for sports because it means he's he's going to be competitive with others, right? With partnerships, with people in the world, he's going to bring them in, into competition and sport and game and and one-on-one uh, -on -one combat, fighting, right? Sixth house is also service to others, uh, pets, uh, hard work, daily grind, work in general things of that nature uh but as it applies to somebody in sports it's really about competition right uh so fifth and sixth house are, are really really prominent and strong here uh, mars is debilitated and i think you know because mars is such a physical planet especially for man it rules the physicality uh, that plays a big role in his growth deficiency, his uh, growth growth hormone deficiency. Mars is ruling the fourth house, so early childhood, right? That's very prominent. 
uh, you know, the fourth house is where we, and this, by the way, this is I see in the third whole sign house. So third house, short distance travel, right? Skills, so soccer, and then Aries as well. So very physical uh, upbringing, sports activity, that sort of thing. And then Mars being deficient there, that it does relate to his growth hormone deficiency. And then there's a square between Jupiter and Mars. And that's quite good as well, because so I think like, you know, with Mars being um, debilitated here, um, because it's opposite exaltation, um, that's showing initial difficulty, especially in the sixth house, right? Mar a debilitated Mars in the sixth house is going to show physical di difficulty with with muscles, with, with physicality. Uh, the square to Jupiter also is not great, but then then you know you, then you're getting some benefit. Why? Because well, number one, uh, fifth and sixth house lords are trading places, Moon and Mercury. So that's benefiting. That's benefiting this Mars. It's benefiting the Sun. It's benefiting Chiron and Venus. This mutual reception, and that plays out in real time. You know, when you have a mutual reception, a series of events will happen in your life that bring about certain things that are strengthening. You know, that that help that benefit. And so that's what's happening here. The, the, initially, the Mars is weak, but it's helped by this mutual reception. Then it's additionally helped by, the, well, the square is not good, but then Jupiter is good. Jupiter square Mars, still Jupiter still helps Mars, right? Especially when it's in Aries and Jupiter is in, and Mars is in uh, Jupiter's sign of exaltation. So this is a mixed mutual reception here between Mars and Jupiter. So his early childhood, um, you know, is then is then benefited the growth thing, you know, even even though he has some some limitations, some challenges, some difficulties, it's benefited, it's helped, right? It's not gonna it's not gonna stop him, it's not gonna block him. It's it's actually improving proving to be something um, of a unique quality that helps him because they say that. Um, you know, because he's short, he has a low center of gravity and it makes him very quick, right? The ball has to be on the ground. So if you're closer to the ball, that's actually better, right? If you if you can utilize it well, you know, if you're strong enough and you're skillful enough, which he is, right? And so uh, I, I think that's really coming to his aid, making him quite unique, short, unimposing, but quick and agile and can really, you know, He's closer to the ball than these taller, bigger players, and he can move right between them. Sort of almost like if you imagine a mouse, you know, a mouse is tiny um, and uh, extremely hard to catch, right? If you see a mouse is just going to small, has small little legs, but they're quick as can be and they hide and they can get around. And, you know, same thing with like, you know, trying to catch a chicken. Chickens are quick. They're small, but they're agile and they're nimble. And you being much bigger, it's still hard to catch it. Hard to catch a chicken, hard to catch a squirrel, just because something small, you know, in a game like soccer, I mean, that's an advantage. You can just, you know, weave your way through bigger, taller players much more efficiently and quickly when you're small. So size is not an impediment in soccer, you know, in wrestling, maybe, although small, I don't know, maybe fo football, I guess, would be basketball, right? things of that nature. But uh, I think small is probably an asset in something like soccer. But again, I'm not, a, I'm not like, <laughs> I don't do sports really. So I'm just, I can only imagine, you know, and what I read. So, and they did say that. So um, that's really interesting. You know, six and fourth uh, are trading places and to some extent as well. Uh, he's got an Aquarius ascendant with Saturn and Uranus in the 11th house of, of groups and networks. So teams. So from right from young age, he was going in, he was going into groups, teams, Sagittarius adventure, right? And Sag is trying in Aries. So this is fire, right? Fire is very physical, athletic, adventurous. Let's get her done. Let's do it. Right. Uh, this Jupiter is ruling Sagittarius, and there's a really nice trine here, especially to Uranus. 
So Jupiter's blessing this Uranus, which is um, mainly I would take Saturn to be the ascendant Lord, but Jupiter also, uh, sorry, not Jupiter, Uranus also is a secondary ascendant Lord. And it's Uranus is less physical, but it is, you know, uh, energetic, more, you know, like a, a spiritual, ethereal, like kind of, um, cause it's for a little further out. Uranus does have some physicality to it. It's like the, when you see Uranus, you can sometimes see it, sometimes not. And that's sort of like the, it's connection to like sometimes manifesting in a physical way, sometimes not. It can. And it often is in something like, um, in a negative way, it can be accidents. Right? Uranus can indicate uh, actual physical accidents, like car accidents, any sort of physical accidents like that. Um, but it can be uh, just dynamic electricity. Right? And so Jupiter here is, is a physical planet. So it does represent physicality. And you often see Jupiter in sports. So Jupiter in Aries is a can definitely be um, related to physical activity, sports, uh, especially with its connection to Mars here. And fourth house, you know, especially in childhood, very physical in childhood. And Jupiter is blessing this Uranus, right? And Uranus um, is also influencing the Jupiter to make him more quick, lightning. Like just boom, you move, boom, you know, that's Uranus. It's just like without, without any forethought, it's just action, right? It's just the bolt of lightning. So he can be very quick and dynamic, in other words, especially from a young age, right? From a young age, he's learning how to be like, how to move like lightning, because that's Uranus. Like Uranus is lightning and thunder. And this trine is, is very supportive. Um. And so he's really, he's going into teams and he's and he's boosting the teams, especially with this Jupiter blessing. You know, the trine here uh, is really strong. So Jupiter's blessing the, the team with him in it from a young age. Uh, let's see. Venus is ruling uh, fifth house. So fifth house in fifth, fifth and the fifth even though it's in gemini it's still you know ruling the, the cusp barely but you know with the with the uh i see here in aries in uh 26 degrees it's still you know we, we have to you know honor honor this even though it's at the 29th degree so i would take i would take venus and and mercury as the fifth house rulers both right um and Venus is opposite Saturn, and that's interesting because Saturn is uh, in the 11th, but pulling in 1st and, and 12th house. And by the way, 12th house does deal with foreign uh, lands. And so he went to a foreign land, um, a team in a foreign land, Spain, right? So it's pulling in that foreign. He's going into teams and he's bringing in foreign elements into the team. So foreign team, Spain. In the 11th house, opposite Venus, Venus is representing the 5th and the 10th, 5th <clears throat> and the 5th and the 10th. Uh, so there's some opposition here between um, his career, his personality, who he is, you know, 5th house entertainer uh, and the teamwork team. So what I think this is, is like, by the way, Venus is good for, for Saturn because Venus rules Libra. And Saturn is exalted in Libra. So even though it's in opposition, it's not completely bad. But there is some conflict here. I don't, and I don't know like the details. I'm only reading this chart. I have no validation for this, but I, I it makes me think um, there could be conflict with other team members because Saturn especially represents people and in the 11th house team. Um, and this opposition is, is usually indicates when planets are opposite, special, especially physical planets, that there's people at odds with each other. People are conflicting. So within the team, even though he's helping really boosting his team up to, you know, much higher status, helping the team win, you know, all the 
soccer games and championships and all that. Like I said, I, I'm not a soccer player, so I can't get all detailed about it. Um, there's conflict within the team, I think. I think there, you know, maybe some jealousy, maybe some other players are sort of, you know, uh, feel overshadowed uh, by Lionel Messi, something like that. You know, there there's, can be conflict, jealousy, opposition, but opposition is healthy with sports because that's what it, it's about. So, I mean, I, I don't think it's so bad, but I, I think it can indicate some various conflicts within the team. Uh, yeah. Chiron doesn't seem to be doing much. It's not really a problem here, although uh, it might indicate something. It's pretty close to both sun and the moon, but close to the moon could indicate an issue, something with his mother, about his mother, about his early childhood. That, and then again, uh, the growth, the growth thing with the moon can represent the past, the early childhood, right? Uh, so mother and early childhood, some some issue there. But uh, obviously didn't stop him. Uh, Venus has a a semi sextile that's one twelfth aspect to Mercury, and it's good because it's it's exact by the degree, and Mercury rules uh, Gemini, so that's quite good. It's it's bonifying this Venus, helping Venus out, and Venus is also really important for sports, uh, because Mars and Venus, uh, along with Jupiter, they they rule the body. Um, Saturn too, more the structure, the frame, the bones, things of that nature. But um, you know, you want Venus and Mars to be good. Uh, so that at least you know this Venus is helping. This Mercury is helping this Venus um, be stronger, strengthen. And then the mutual reception with Moon and Mercury also helps this Venus. So these planets, you know, they're they're good. They're doing well, and then they're they're in the right houses. Now, Pluto is in Scorpio, so it's in domicile, and it's very powerful, and, in, and very powerful, it's angular, in the 10th whole sign now, 10th quadrant. <clears throat> so this shows a very powerful career. Um, powerful and potentially destructive. Um, destructive, I mean, it doesn't have any many bad aspects, I guess the North Node, but... I don't really consider that too much. Uh, I consider squares and trines to the nodes more, much more uh, important. We'll get to this. Um, but th it is square the ascendant. So this is somebody, and square is not bad, remember, it's just difficult. It represents a challenge and it brings out a, a, a bit more of the, the, more, the harsher aspects. But the 10th house is always square the ascendant. So it creates a very powerful career in public image. At the same time, this is kind of like um, the square to the ascendant because by degree, it's pretty it's three degrees, um, well, less than three degrees apart. So it's pretty strong. Um, that is going to make him more destructive, more um, powerful, but also potentially destructive in a way that uh, sort of like, uh, Pluto represents the the deepest desires. So when when Pluto is uh, negatively aspected, it brings out the this um, kind of like uh, indomitable will, the, the 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 kind of will that will go to the nth degree to to achieve what it wants. Why? Because it's fueled by the the deepest desires. And when you have the deepest desires. Uh, fulfilling, uh, uh, pushing, driving your goals, then you just go, like you go beyond. Like some people, they will literally die before they give in. And that's a very Plutonic thing, especially when it's in Scorpio, right? They will just go to the exhaustion to the, till there's nothing left, right? To, to achieve their goals. So that's the sort of drive that Pluto can represent, especially when it's in Scorpio or in another powerful sign, right? Like maybe Leo 
would be another one. We And then Pluto moves so slowly that, you know, it's not like we're going to get people who are alive right now who have all the other ones, but like, you know, probably in Aries, it's super powerful as well. Um, Yeah, I mean, I would guess so still. I mean, it's most powerful in Scorpio because that's a domicile. But Leo, some people say Aquarius. But um, so we'll, that, we're about to, it's about to move into Aquarius. So we'll see, but maybe Aries as well. And that's, we're not going to, most of us, I don't think are going to live to see it in Aries anyway. Uh, but this is very powerful and shows his great strength of will. Uh, Neptune is in Capricorn and it's square the nodes. So this is significant and we have to pay attention to this. Uh, one thing I can say is that uh, Neptune and Pisces, 12th house, represent the feet, you know, uh, so for soccer, football, that's very important, feet. Uh, Capricorn represents the knees. So if we're talking about body parts, uh, this is very um, activated, the feet and the knees. So for soccer, that's that's important. Also represents foreign lands. So Spain, which is a foreign land to him. And um, Neptune in the 12th is quite good. It can show a very uh, a strong intuition, a strong spirituality, a strong connection to um, the subconscious, right? And so potentially he's he has some sort of spiritual connection that's aiding his, his uh, football playing, right? Um, the squares to the nodes will make it somewhat more difficult. Will mean that he has to pay attention to this, even if he doesn't want to. And it could be, um, you know, Capricorn does deal with the bones, right? And so this potentially is is another thing um, uh, relating to uh, the the growth issue, because it's in Capricorn and it's square the nodes. Uh, what else it can relate to besides the things that I've already mentioned is uh, charity because 12th house is lost. Neptune is lost. Capricorn is organization. And let me just share my, um, share the Wikipedia. He has his own, he, uh, Messi founded his own charitable organization, the Leo Messi Foundation. So that's very prominent. That could be one of his karmic sort of destinies. Uh to have to be able to give back to others, to be charitable. Um, this also somewhat represents lies and deceit, deception, dishonesty. And there were some tax evasion type stuff that I don't I don't think he was guilty of. I mean, maybe inadvertently through, um, you know, things that he signed away power to authority over, you know, to other people and they, they messed up his taxes. But there were some tax issues that uh, he got caught about. Capricorn represents government, so there's that. Um, so that that's all interesting. I think all those things can apply to this. But that it's important, the square of the nodes show that it's very important for him to um, deal with these issues, uh, whatever they may be. You know, all the things that I mentioned, the Neptune and Capricorn in the 12th. It's going to have different themes playing out at different times. South node in Libra in ninth whole sign house, uh, but approaching the MC, so, but it's still ninth. I guess religion uh, played an important part in his early life, um, as it does with a lot of these um, Latin American countries. Uh Catholicism is very important to them. And Libra also deals with relationships and partnerships and equality and uh, things of that nature. It's activating Venus. So games, you know, skills, talents, and opposition to, you know, the Ascendant Lord. And the so activating the sports, definitely. And then as well, you know, with the North Node in Aries, Third House, um, short distance travel skills, friends, you know, and then Mars, uh, sixth house. So both of these are activating the, the sports and all that because he's all about teams and sports and, you know, uh, that whole thing. 
you know, Aries, short distance travel, running up and down the field, being skillful, all that, right? Uh, Pluto, sextile, Neptune, that's a generational thing, but it is, you know, it's still, it's still good. Um, Pluto is helping Neptune and Neptune is helping Pluto. Right. It's just, it's just adding, adding power to his, um, to whatever this, this, all these things that represented that I talked about before. It's being helped by Pluto. That's good. Uh, what else? I think this moon, moon ascendant. Oh, that's early childhood issues again. Jupiter, Mars. I already talked about that. Um, eighth in the sixth, eighth Lord Mercury in the sixth house. That's actually good because it rep it shows that like eighth house when when uh, malefic houses uh lords are in each other's houses that's good because it mean it shows like kind of a, a reversal of whatever negativity comes from that house because these houses kind of reverse things turn good things bad and then they turn bad things good when when their lord is in this so like death uh becomes competitive or something like that <laughs> at least when the sixth lord, when I, I like to say when the sixth lord goes in the eighth that's like the death of conflict so here's similar. It's like death is coming into conflict. So he wins over his enemies because he's carrying in that the eighth house element here in the sixth house. So he's very competitive and and uh, bringing in the eighth house um, rule or the eighth house element. Right. So death to the enemy, not really, but figuratively, death to his opponents in sports. Um, if you look at the draconic chart, um, it's it's pretty similar because you can see the nodes. Um, not too much different here. Pluto and Libra. So Mars doesn't really gain any dignity. Uh, everything is pretty similar except moon, uh, Sun goes into Gemini. And I mean, you know, Neptune goes moves into Sagittarius. I don't think there's anything to draw from this very much. It's just a re, it's just a um, reinforcement of of the natal chart. Everything is just you know a bit stronger. I mean, ascendant moves into Capricorn, but it's still ruled by Saturn, so it's not it's not really doing much. Um, yeah, I think you know he's just he's he's got planets in the right places, and and it's very dynamic the way that he's got these mutual receptions. Um, moon, Mercury, Moon's out of bounds, taking things going further. Um, Mercury um bonifying or receiving um Venus uh Mars Jupiter reception there's one more um yeah sun Jupiter sun Jupiter in each other's sign of exaltation Jupiter's exalted in in uh cancer sun's exalted in in um Aries but these are not good by degree. These are good by degree, Mars and Mars and Jupiter. It's a mixed reception, but it's still, there's still an energy exchange there. And then uh, Venus bonifying Saturn by, uh, you know, being, ruling the sign of its exaltation. They're exactly opposite. And then Jupiter sending its blessings over here to Uranus. So all the things I said. Right. Uh, I can't think of anything else, really.
important. So that's it for Lionel Messi. And guys, don't forget to hit the like button. Really helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you have not already. Leave a comment below if you like about anything. And book a reading with me. My website is macroastrology.com. My email is macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com. And I will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.